Chapter 15, Medical Ministry in the Homes The Door of Entrance to Homes Medical missionary work is the pioneer work of the gospel. The door through which the truth for this time is to find entrance to many homes. God's people are to be genuine medical missionaries, for they are to learn to minister to the needs of both the soul and the body. The purest unselfishness is to be shown by our workers, as with the knowledge and experience gained by practical work, they go out to give treatments to the sick. As they go from house to house, they will find access to many hearts. Many will be reached who otherwise never would have heard the gospel message. Review and Herald, December 17, 1914. Christ will guide in this ministry. If you are pressing close to the side of Christ, wearing his yoke, you will daily learn of him how to carry messages of peace and comfort to the sorrowing and disappointed, the sad and brokenhearted. You can point the discouraged one to the word of God and take the sick to the Lord in prayer. As you pray, speak to Christ as you would to a trusted, much-loved friend. Maintain a sweet, free, pleasant dignity as a child of God. This will be recognized. Testimonies, Volume 6, pages 323 and 324. The Ministry of Christ-like Physicians and Nurses Oh, that all who are afflicted could be ministered to by Christ-like physicians and nurses who could help them to place their weary, pain-racked bodies in the care of the great healer, in faith, looking to him for restoration. Every sincere Christian bows to Jesus as the true physician of souls. When he stands by the bedside of the afflicted, there will be many, not only converted, but healed. If through judicious ministration, the patient is led to give his soul to Christ, and to lead his thoughts into obedience to the will of God, a great victory is gained. Review and Herald, May 9, 1912. The Missionary Nurse in the Home The Lord wants wise men and women acting in the capacity of nurses to comfort and help the sick and suffering. There are many lines of work to be carried forward by the missionary nurse. There are openings for well-trained nurses to go among families and seek to awaken an interest in the truth. In almost every community there are large numbers who do not attend any religious service. If they are reached by the gospel, it must be carried to their homes. Often the relief of their physical needs is the only avenue by which they can be approached. As missionary nurses care for the sick and relieve the distress of the poor, they will find many opportunities to pray for them to read to them from God's Word, to speak of the Savior. They can pray with and for the helpless ones who have not strength of will to control the appetites that passion has degraded. They can bring a ray of hope into the lives of the defeated and disheartened. Their unselfish love, manifested in acts of disinterested kindness, will make it easier for these suffering ones to believe in the love of Christ. Review and Herald, May 9, 1912. Teach the people how to keep well. The medical missionary work presents many opportunities for service. Intemperance in eating and ignorance of nature's laws are causing much of the suffering that exists and are robbing God of the glory due Him. Teach the people that it is better to know how to keep well than to know how to cure disease. We should be wise educators, warning all against self-indulgence. As we see the wretchedness, deformity, and disease that have come into the world as a result of ignorance, how can we refrain from doing our part to enlighten the ignorant and relieve the suffering? Review and Herald, June 9, 1912. The same principle all should master. God's people are to be genuine medical missionaries. They are to learn to minister to the needs of soul and body. They should know how to give the simple treatments that do so much to relieve pain and remove disease. They should be familiar with the principles of health reform, that they may show others how, by right habits of eating, drinking, and dressing, disease may be prevented and health regained. 
a demonstration of the value of the principles of health reform will do much toward removing prejudice against our evangelical work. The great physician, the originator of medical missionary work, will bless every one who will go forward humbly and trustfully, seeking to impart the truth for this time. Review and Herald, Maine 5, 1904. A continual reform essential. Reform, continual reform, must be kept before the people, and by our example we must enforce our teachings. True religion and the laws of health go hand in hand. It is impossible to work for the salvation of men and women without presenting to them the need of breaking away from sinful gratifications, which destroy the health, debase the soul, and prevent divine truth from impressing the mind. Men and women must be taught to take a careful review of every habit and practice, and at once put away those things that cause an unhealthy condition of the body, and thus cast a dark shadow over the mind. Review and Herald, November 12, 1901. Teach the Principles of Healthful Cooking Because the avenues of the soul have been closed by the tyrant prejudice, many are ignorant of the principles of healthful living. Good service can be done by teaching the people how to prepare healthful food. This line of work is as essential as any that can be taken up. More cooking schools should be established, and some should labor from house to house, giving instruction in the art of cooking wholesome foods. Many, many will be rescued from physical, mental, and moral degeneracy through the influence of health reform. These principles will commend themselves to those who are seeking for light, and such will advance from this to receive the full truth for this time. God wants his people to receive no impart. As impartial, unselfish witnesses, they are to give to others what the Lord has given to them. And as you enter into this work, and by whatever means in your power seek to reach hearts, be sure to work in a way that will remove prejudice instead of creating it. Make the life of Christ your constant study and labor as he did, following his example. Review and Herald, June 6, 1912. We need a genuine education in the art of cooking. Form classes where you may teach the people how to make good bread and how to put together ingredients to make healthful food combinations from the grains and the vegetables. Manuscript 150, 1905. Follow a course that commends reform. Many of the views held by Seventh-day Adventists differ widely from those held by the world in general. Those who advocate an unpopular truth should, above all others, seek to be consistent in their own life. They should not try to see how different they can be from others, but how near they can come to those whom they wish to influence, that they may help them to the position they themselves so highly prize. Such a course will commend the truths they hold. Those who are advocating reform in diet should, by the provision they make for their own table, present the advantages of hygiene in the best light. They should so exemplify its principles as to commend it to the judgment of candid minds. When those who advocate hygienic reform carry the matter to extremes, people are not to blame if they become disgusted. Too often our religious faith is thus brought into disrepute, and in many cases those who witness such exhibitions of inconsistency can never afterward be brought to think that there is anything good in the reform. These extremists do more harm in a few months than they can undo in a lifetime. They are engaged in a work which Satan loves to see go on. Narrow ideas and overstraining of small points have been a great injury to the cause of hygiene. Christian Temperance and Bible Hygiene, pages 55 and 57. Personal Views Not to be Urged Those who have but a partial understanding of the principles of reform are often the most rigid, not only in carrying out their views themselves, but in urging them on their families and their neighbors. The effect of their mis Mistaken reforms, as seen in their own ill health and their efforts to force their views upon others, 
give many a false idea of dietetic reform and lead them to reject it altogether. Those who understand the laws of health and who are governed by principle will shun the extremes, both of indulgence and of restriction. Their diet is chosen not for the mere gratification of appetite, but for the upbuilding of the body. They seek to preserve every power in the best condition for highest service to God and man. The appetite is under the control of reason and conscience, and they are rewarded with health of body and mind. While they do not urge their views offensively upon others, their example is a testimony in favor of right principles. These persons have a wide influence for good. There is a real common sense in dietetic reform. The subject should be studied broadly and deeply, and no one should criticize others because their practice is not in all things in harmony with his own. It is impossible to make an unvarying rule to regulate everyone's habits, and no one should think himself a criterion for all. Not all can eat the same things. Foods that are palatable and wholesome to one person may be distasteful and evil, even harmful to another. Some cannot use milk, while others thrive on it. Some persons cannot digest peas and beans. Others find them wholesome. For some, the coarser grain preparations are good food, while others cannot use them. Ministry of Healing, pages 318 and 320. Light for the salvation of the world. Those who act as teachers are to be intelligent in regard to disease and its causes, understanding that every action of the human agent should be in perfect harmony with the laws of life. The light God has given on health reform is for our salvation and the salvation of the world. Men and women should be informed in regard to the human habitation fitted up by our Creator as His dwelling place and over which he desires us to be faithful stewards. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Review and Herald, November 12, 1901. Revives Confidence Many have no faith in God and have lost confidence in man, but they appreciate acts of sympathy and helpfulness. As they see one with no inducement of earthly praise or compensation coming to their homes, ministering to the sick, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, comforting the sad, and tenderly pointing all to him of whose love and pity the human worker is but the messenger. As they see this, their hearts are touched. Gratitude springs up. Faith is kindled. They see that God cares for them. And as his word is opened, they are prepared to listen. Review and Herald, May 9, 1912. Many saved from degradation. I have been shown that the medical missionary work will discover, in the very depths of degradation, men who once possessed fine minds, richest qualifications, who will be rescued by proper labor from their fallen condition. It is the truth as it is in Jesus that is to be brought before human minds after they have been sympathetically cared for and their physical necessities met. The Holy Spirit is working and cooperating with the human agencies that are laboring for such souls, and some will appreciate the foundation upon a rock for their religious faith. There is to be no startling communication of strange doctrine to these subjects whom God loves and pities, But as they are helped physically by the medical missionary workers, the Holy Spirit cooperates with the minister of human agencies to arouse the moral powers. The mental powers are awakened into activity, and these poor souls will, many of them, be saved in the kingdom of God. Nothing can or ever will give character to the work in the presentation of truth to help the people just where they are so well as Samaritan work. A work properly conducted to save poor sinners that have been passed by the churches will be the entering wedge whereby the truth will find standing room. A different order of things needs to be established among us as a people, and as this class of work is done, there will be created an entirely different atmosphere surrounding the souls of the workers. 
for the Holy Spirit communicates to all those who are doing God's service, and those who are worked by the Holy Spirit will be a powerful God in lifting up, strengthening, and saving the souls that are ready to perish. Special Testimonies, Series A, Number 11, Page 32. Zeal and Perseverance Required could I arouse our people to Christian effort? Could I lead them to engage in medical missionary work with holy zeal and divine perseverance, not in a few places, but in every place, putting forth personal effort for those out of the fold, how grateful I should be. This is true missionary work. In some places it is attended with little success, apparently. But again the Lord opens the way and signal success attends the effort. Words are spoken, which are as nails fastened in a sure place. Angels from heaven cooperate with human instrumentalities, and sinners are one to the Savior. Letter 43, 1903 Holy and devout men and women called Holy and devout persons, both men and women, are wanted now to go forth as medical missionaries. Let them cultivate their physical and mental powers and their piety to the uttermost. Every effort should be made to send forth intelligent workers. The same grace that came from Jesus Christ to Paul and Apollos, which caused them to be distinguished for their spiritual excellencies, can be received now and will bring into the working order many devoted missionaries. Special Testimonies Relating to Medical Missionary Work, page 8. Do not wait. Workers, gospel medical missionaries are needed now. You cannot afford to spend years in preparation. Soon doors, now open to the truth, will be forever closed. Carry the message now. Do not wait, allowing the enemy to take possession of the fields now open before you. Let little companies go forth to do the work to which Christ appointed his disciples. Let them labor as evangelists scattering our publications, and talking of the truth to those they meet. Let them pray for the sick, ministering to their necessities, not with drugs, but with nature's remedies, and teaching them how to regain health and avoid disease. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 172.